That's Marama. The Dwarven King's heart is soft. But his axe is sharp. And his adopted daughter, Catibri, a deadly archer, destined to be a leader. They will resist. The newly crowned king of the Reghead Barbarians. Wolfgar, son of Beornagar. If he can master his rage, he will be dangerous. To word the drow outcast. Few can match his deadly speed. He could be the key to everything. They care for each other. Something to be exploited, perhaps. But their bond is strong. Regardless. They failed to secure the shard from that fool, Kessel. It's out there, exposed for the taking. And now, it will be mine. shard, forged from the magic of seven liches, but with a treacherous will of its own. For thousands of years, the shard lay forgotten beneath the snows of Icewind Dale. There it waited, until some fool, a would-be wizard lusting for power beyond his due, answered the shard's call. A card Kessel claimed the shard and used its power to summon armies of evil creatures to his banner. From his crystal tower, he set them loose upon the Dale and the people of Ten Towns. But we would not stand by and watch this tyrant destroy our homes. We companions rallied the united peoples of Ten Towns and held our ground at the walls of Bryn Shandon. chased Kessel to the slopes of Kelvin's cave. When the Shard realized that we had won, it abandoned him. It disappeared once again under the snows, along with Kessel himself. With Kessel gone, we thought the war was over. We were wrong. Though the Crystal Shard was lost, still it called those who craved power. Its call was strong. And from across the realms, they came. But we answered a call of our own. A call to stand together against this dark alliance. And defend our home against the threat of Crenshinabar. The United Peoples of Icewind Dale had defeated Kessel's armies. And destroyed his crystal tower. But the dwarven warriors of Clan Battlehammer returned home to find their halls overrun, their people fleeing the valley. We rush to their aid, fighting our way through the goblins in Verbeeg to find the goblin commander and put an end to this siege. Whoa! 
It was not goblins that drove the battle hammers from their halls. It was Durgar. They came from the Underdark and had penetrated the lower halls, exposing the dwarves to attack. With the dwarven warriors off fighting Kessel, those dwarves who remained behind were no match for the invading Durgar. Before the battle hammer halls could be secured, we would have to seal the Durgar breaching tunnels. The Durgar we faced were but an advanced force of legions on approach along Bangor's span. The lone gateway to the Underdark. Dwarven sappers had collapsed bridges and tunnels all across their domain. But they had been unable to reach the span. It was up to us. Destroy Bangor's span, and that Durgar army would be safely stranded in the Underdark. But we would first have to face the elite force of Durgar, holding the span's entry. home was a ruin, and the destruction of Bangor's span, the bridge named for his father, its loss was a heavy burden. The dwarves had to abandon their life, chased from their homes by the goblin and verbeek remnants of Kessel's armies. His threats and worse had answered the call of Krent Shinnabon. The only thing that stood between these creatures, the shard, and the utter destruction of our home. Goblins had begun constructing a tower to secure their foothold in Bruner's home, and had spread out from that stronghold into the Dwarven Valley. The first step to clear out the goblins was breaking into the goblin fort guarding the entrance to Rugrib's quarter. We would have to recover explosives to blow our way through their fortifications, and then take out the foreman and his Verbeeg enforcer. Hey! I need that! I'm on break! Cap Right here! Where are you going with that? Put that over there! Casper! Move your sucker! Move your own sucker, both a shuck! Hey! Get that box out! I said there! Not here! There! I tell him, Tommy! My God! My God! Not there! They need that 
below, Gata! Meat's dropping from the sky, by! Go, <laughs> come on. Still bloody. <laughs> That's lunch! <laughs> That's a word, Katara! Emperor Hambuk, he called himself. This goblin claimed to have found the shard. But what his goblin horde was constructing was no crystal tower. There was only one way into the canyon where Hambuk was building his tower. Its entry was held by Goffin's door. But the door's runestone locks were scattered across Rugrib's quarter. And so before we stormed the tower, we would recover the runestones. Engage those locks on Goffin's door, and seal Hamburg in. We had sealed Hamburg within his canyon, but left unchecked, he would eventually break free. If that happened, all of Ten Towns would suffer raids from his goblin horde. And so now was the time to assault his throne room. Once Hamburg was defeated, we would tear down his tower and restore dignity to at least this part of the Dwarven Valley. Verbeeg and goblins had worked together to invade the Dwarven Valley. But some had broken off and had taken Anoragon's forge. We would have to take out the Verbeeg holding the forge gates before dealing with whatever horrors we would find within. To find the Verbeeg, we would only have to follow the sound of their voices. Dwarven sappers had cut off access to the forge from their halls. The Verbeeg managed to break in through the exterior gate. What they didn't count on were the Durgar who had their own designs on Anoragon's forge. The Durgar had hidden the runestone keys to lock the forge gate. We would have to recover those keys before we could enter the forge and deal with the Verbeeg inside. Verbeeg. Vile creatures, with a taste for the flesh of dwarves. What they didn't count on were the Durgar who had their own designs on Anoragon's forge. Though we would cut down every last Verbeeg found within the forge, 
What we witnessed there would scar us for the rest of our days. My only comfort is that none of my friends are here to witness what these for me have done. And what I'm about to do to them in return. Working not to die for the face. <laughs> Maybe them grogs taste bad. Yeah. <laughs> 
Out of the big blood I spill today will threaten to quench the lava that flows within this forge. Yeah. 
By the axes of Plangadon! Magic. Where's the booyah? I won't be able to rest until I've killed every Verbeek that dared set foot in my forge. My powers are fast! Yes, I once said 
One light, they called themselves. Cultists who worship the crystal shard like a god. We found the Order's fortress, hidden within the spine of the world. They were under siege by the forces of Levistus and had erected a magical barrier to keep the devils at bay. We would have to recover the keystones to bring down that barrier before we can enter the fortress and deal with the mages within. There is only one master of the shard. <laughs> Crystal cult necromancers had reanimated the corpse of a car Kessel and granted him arcane powers he never achieved in life. From the safety of the warded inner sanctum of their fortress, he called out to any ally that would assist his rise to power once again. We would need to break down the Sanctum's defenses before we could deal with Kessel himself, hopefully for the last time. Kessel did not have the Shard to help him dominate creatures, but the power the cultist had given him was still dangerous. Though few had answered Kessel's call, in time they would grow and be a threat to the entire day. Now was the time to deal with Kissel once and for all. I died and it was their fault. I can still hear it calling, taunting. And here they are again. A chance for me to prove my worth. They will submit to my rule. And I will reclaim it. What is mine? Chardolin crystals are plentiful in the ruins under Kelvin's care. Their magic once helped keep Kelvin's floating city in the clouds. But now, Durgar had moved in to mine the Chardolin from the city's ruins, and they were trucking it down deep into the catacombs. Four rune swords controlled the entrance to the lower mines, and we 
would have to light them all to press deeper into the Durgar operation. The dwarves had long abandoned the mines under Kelvin's care due to the toxic presence of Crystal Remnant, the remains of Kelvin's Crystal Towers. S such concerns were of no matter to Durgar, nor to the cultists who had come to entreat with the being the Durgar served. We would have to run the gauntlet of Durgar and cultist minions before we could come face to face with this entity. Hagedorn was the name that echoed in our minds. It was what had dominated the Durgar. An aberration. A beholder. Hagedorn was combining Shardalin and Crystal Remnant, using its magic to form the materials into some sort of arcane device. We would have to defeat Hagedorn and destroy the artifact it was trying to create. Its own dreamed-up manifestation of the Crystal Shard. Only a primitive mind will dare delve so deeply into my affairs. For any creature with half a brain would quickly comprehend their peril and do the only thing that makes sense. Kelvin's cairn was named for the great frost giant king of old who was buried beneath it. So the legend told. Utar was one of the few remaining frost giant kings of Icewind Dale. He had delved deep under Kelvin's cairn and broken the seal set by the clerics of Tempest on the tomb of Kelvin. Utar's actions had disturbed the dead, and we would have to lay them back to rest before following Utar into the catacombs of Kelvin's fallen city.
Ragnar sought the Mask of Kelvin, believing that the artifact of his forefather would help him recover the Crystal Shard. To catch up with Utar, we would have to pass through the shattered remnants of the broken city. But navigating to Kelvin's tomb would be a challenge. We would need to recover the keystones to activate the portal that would take us there. None could say what damage Kelvin's spirit would do if it was unleashed upon the Dale. And so we delved into Kelvin's tomb ourselves, seeking out Utar so that we could put a stop to this madness. But none of us were prepared for what we found there waiting in the dark. Who knew the call of the Shard was so strong? The mighty Jarl, Keeper of the Horn and Slayer of the Doomful, the last true king of the Utah. When Wolfgar and I slew the white dragon icing death, no tears were shed. The beast was a menace. But, but now, our actions had brought icing death's mate, Icewind, back to the Dale to exact her vengeance. Some creatures were serving the dragon, bringing her prisoners in exchange for their own lives. We would root them out and discover from them where Icewind had made her lair. Icewind had made her lair within the ruined city of Netherhall, atop the broken temple of Othea. Approaching that broken city on the surface would be foolhardy. Even if its skies weren't patrolled by a marauding dragon, we would approach from below, making our way through the catacombs under Netherhall, where we would find a key to the temple gates. White dragons are simple creatures but not without cunning. And Icewind was more cunning than most. The dragon was baiting us to fight her on her terms. Not ideal. But if we didn't face her, she would continue to terrorize the Dale. And so we entered the ruined temple of Othea to face the fury of Icewind. Since we've had our way 
you. You're still as captivating as ever. Shh. I'll make those vermin bow at your feet. You'll want for nothing. And neither will I. Once I have your murderers in my jaws. how it ended. We had bled for the Dale. Struck fear into the hearts of those who sought Krench Shinnabon and broken its dark alliance. There were none left brave enough to answer the call, knowing who they would have to face to claim it. We four companions. I look back on those days and remember how the bonds of friendship were forged through battle. The strength of our companionship had silenced the shard and shown us that together, we could overcome anything.